I had some challenging thoughts this morning where different relationships were just kind of like coming to me and I was thinking like, this is irritating me. And then I had a conversation with my mom and she's like, remember why these different relationships are in your life and focus on the positive. And I was like, you know what, you're right. It's so easy and we're all guilty for it because we're human to have things that bother us about others. And sometimes it's a mirror of what's happening with ourselves and other times it has nothing to do with it. It could be from something from the past. But this quote I really resonated with and I'm gonna share it with you. Try to see the good in others. When you're tempted to judge someone, make an effort to see their goodness. Your willingness to look for the best in people will subconsciously bring it forth, right? So these people are in your life for a reason. So let's bring out the best, shall we? And not only find the best in them, but like let them know what it is, right? And thank them for sharing it. And then that's what we're gonna manifest to grow. And hopefully this resonates with you as well. And then the reason I was telling you to find hamstrings or hip opening that's more challenging is, for me, it's the hamstrings. My hips are fairly open, but it's the hamstrings that hold me back. And it's easy to focus on the thing that's harder for us, but instead, like, find that way to be like, you know what, I'm going to embrace it. And the more I work at it, the better I'm going to get at it. And vice versa, what you're really good at, share that with others. Share what's helped you get there. All right. Enough of the jibble jabble, let's start. Comfortable seat, close your eyes. Placing the palms down today. Draw the shoulders up by your ears, take them back, set them down. Feel your shoulder blades even kiss together behind you. Collarbones broaden, chin parallel to the ground. And then lean back ever so slightly, almost like you could lean into the wall. So the crown of your head reaches up towards the sky. Sits bones root down into the ground. So we're really rooting here. The elbows can even touch the side of your waistline. And know that your yoga begins now. Deepening the breath, elongating both the inhale and the exhale. If you can, keeping the lips closed so it's ujjayi breath constricting the back of the throat. And then bringing the hands to heart center, bow your chin to your fingertips. Maybe someone came to the forefront of your mind and maybe it's relationships in general. But just for today, let's try to focus on the good, bring out the best in ourselves and in others. So that's what we put out there. And then like a boomerang, it echoes right back to us. Maybe even dedicating this practice to that person who may be testing you right now, because I guarantee you, they are your best teacher. And if we learn this lesson now, it's not gonna keep showing up, right? When you're ready, eyes open. Send these prayer hands all the way up to the sky. Open your palms. And then today, just release the arms by your side. Let's hinge forward. Maybe the forearms come down, maybe making prayer hands, rest your forehead. Just breathing into the back body, the hips. Walking yourself back upright. For those that did choose the cross leg variation, let's switch the shin that's in front. And now let's walk the right fingers out to the side, reach your left arm up, and then just start to take the bicep to the ear, side bending to the right. If you want a little deeper stretch, walk your fingers further away from the torso, soften the elbow. Sometimes the forearm will rest down, and then gaze underneath your shoulder, so you're looking up. If this hurts the neck, you can always look down towards the right hand. And then as you start to come up right, take your left fingers just above your right ear and then lower your left ear to the left shoulder. Get a nice stretch in your neck. You can even tilt the chin towards the shoulder and then up towards the sky. Beautiful, and then release and let's go to the other side. So left hand roots down, right arm reaches up, bicep over the ear, side body stretch to the left. 
If you want more, walk your left fingers away from you, soften the elbow, perhaps forearm comes down. Keep pulling the right shoulder head back so when you look underneath your right arm, you really open the heart. And then as you come up right, right fingers above left ear, right ear, right shoulder, feel the stretch in the left side of your neck. And then play with tucking the chin down, lifting it up, just giving our neck or control center some love. Beautiful, release that. Let's find our way into tabletop. All fours. Make sure if you look between your legs, you don't see the tops of your feet, so keep them in line with your shin bones. And we'll start with cat-cow. Tucking the toes, inhale, lift your heart, look up. As you exhale, round and tuck. Tops of the feet can come down, really pull everything up and in. Couple more, inhale, arch the spine, look up. Exhale, tops of the feet come down, pull up and in and round. One more time, flexion, extension, the spine. Exhale, round it out. Beautiful, find neutral here. Let's extend our right arm forward like we're gonna shake someone's hand. Left toes can tuck behind you as you straighten the leg, maybe elevate at hip height. And then we're gonna take awkward airplane. So your right arm reaches out to the right. You can bend your left knee and then extend the left leg out. You're gonna feel this awake in the core. Lift both an inch higher, the hand and the foot, and then return back to center. Now bend your left leg and with your right hand, see if you can find your foot or ankle. If you keep kicking up into the leg, you'll find a little back bend. Press into the top of your right foot for stability. Dristi can look down towards the left finger or up towards the ceiling. And then with grace, arm forward, leg back, hand down, knee down. Let's try side two. Left arm extends, right toe tucks, right leg straightens. You can lift the leg, pull that lower belly up and in, and then left arm to the left. You can bend your right knee to get the external rotation and then extend it out. So you're leading with your heel, work the oblique. Arm and leg higher one inch, back to center. Bend your right leg, left hand tries to find foot or ankle. Root into the top of the left foot, look down towards right thumb or for more, gaze up, kick into the leg to pull the left shoulder open. Breathe. And then with grace, arm forward, leg back, hand down, knee down, child's pose. Toes come together, knees open wide. Go ahead and melt that forehead down. Maybe taking prayer hands. Bending at your elbows so the thumbs come behind the nape of the neck. You can walk your elbows towards each other as well as forward. Praying for justice. Bowing our head humbly, knowing that something bigger is happening. Trusting it and finding the best, finding the good. When you're ready, we're going to make our way into our first down dog. So you can come into your tabletop position. You can tuck your toes. First one, I recommend doing a turbo dog. So keep your knees bent, releasing the neck by shaking your head out. And then you can take the dog for a walk, straightening through one leg and then the other. Let's come high up on all 10 toes. Lift those heels, dial them to the right. Look under your left arm. Keep pushing the mat forward. How much space can you find? Good, high lifted heels, sink them to the left. Look under your right arm. Oh yeah, something's happening. One more time, high up on 10 toes, and then try to root your heels down towards the earth, pressing the shin bones back, the chest back. Let's shift forward into plank, upper push-up position. So setting alignment here, you may have to walk your hands a little further forward after first down dog. Now without moving your hands or your feet, just lift your hips up and back. Relax the jaw, keep that breath in and out through the nose. One more time, inhale, exhale. And then look to the top of your mat and let's bring our feet to our hands your way. First one, I usually like to do tippy toes or baby steps. Feet end up about hips distance apart. Let's grab opposite forearms. Maybe a little gentle sway. Knees can be as soft as you need. 
So for those that are with me in the hamstring, sometimes what I do is I manually like go in there and give them a little love, like tap them out. Like, hey guys, we're here, all is well. If you did grab your forearms or elbows, go ahead, release. So now the arms just dangle here. We're gonna root to rise. So push into your feet, knees soft, chin tucked, and one vertebra at a time, unfurl. Oh yeah. Beautiful, top of the mat, big toes together, mountain pose. So your namaskar A, inhale, arms reach out. Exhale, forward fold, fingertips light up the mat. Inhale, lengthen halfway, you can bring your hands to your shins, nice flat back. Exhale, first one, step back, plank pose. Familiar, three breaths here, spread the fingers wide. I always like to put some weight into the finger pads so the wrists don't weight bear. And then first one, let's lower to the belly. Nice, narrow, chaturanga arms so the chest and hips lower at the same time. Tops of the feet down, cobra. Draw the elbows in, lift your chest. Keeping the work honest, float your hands an inch off the ground. Lift another rib cage. Exhale, release. Repeating that or coming into upward facing dog, straightening out the arms, thighs lift. Nice, and then pull through your core center all the way back to down dog. Deep breath in, let's take an open mouth exhale. Couple more breaths, starting to get warm, creating some heat. And then let's reach our right leg open. Bend the knees, stretch it out, look under your right arm. Square the shoulder to look under left arm so your right shoulder drops. Step it through, low crescent lunge. So right foot to your right hand. Lower your left knee onto the earth. You can bring your hands on your thigh. Push down, peel the torso upright. So the hips are really descending down. If you want a little more, arms can reach up. Start to shine your heart. Maybe a cactus arm today. You may even wish to interlace your fingers. Knuckles run down the left thigh. So you can really find a back bend. Opening the throat here as well. And then exhale, bring both hands to the inside of your right foot. Heel toe your right foot to the edge of your mat. Stay here. You can drop to your elbows. Forearms come down. Now either way, I want to add in a little twist here. So if your left hand is down, it's under the left shoulder, right hand to the thigh. Just take a peek over that right shoulder. If you're on your forearm, I like the forearm parallel to the top of the mat so your left hand can actually reach for your right ankle, yeah. And then you could get that same stretch. Now if you want to add in your quad, bend your back leg towards you. So the heel to the glute with your right hand, see if you find that foot. Ah, so nice, you can even pull the right shoulder back, opening the chest. And then we're gonna come to half Hanuman. So release all that, back to your hands. Heel toe, right foot to the center, and extend the leg straight. Flex your foot. It doesn't take much here to engage sensation. You can just bend your elbows. Think about a long spine instead of rounding. Think about leading with the heart. Beautiful. So re-engage that lunge. Hands frame the right foot. Left toe tucks, left knee lift. Step back, work through vinyasa. Lower down halfway or all the way. Inhale, up dog or cobra. Exhale, lead with your core, down dog. Left leg rises up, open, bend and stretch. Look under the left arm, find space. Look under the right arm, which is gonna help the left shoulder head come down. And then look forward, left foot to your left thumb. Release your right knee down, release the top of your right foot. Bring your hands to your thighs, push against the thighs so you can really lift up. You're gonna feel it in your psoas. So you could stay here, you could reach the arms, you could take cactus or gold pose, maybe interlacing the fingers, let the knuckles run down the right leg. So you add in the shoulder opener as you look up. You can even open the throat chakra. And then exhale, hands inside the left foot. So heel toe that left foot to the edge of your mat. So you can stay here feeling this stretch. If you want to try to come down to your forearms, keep leading with the heart though. Don't back off, right? Forward. Always going forward, moving energy forward. 
And then whether your right hand's under the shoulder, left hand to the thigh, twist. You could bend your back leg, left hand reaches. If you're on your forearm, try bringing it parallel to the top, reach for left ankle. Maybe leaning back. And then half a split, so back to your hands, heel to the left foot center. Straighten your front leg. Flexing the foot, lead with the heart, simply bend your elbows. Feeling it in the hamstring already. Doesn't take much. Beautiful, re-engage that lunge, hands frame the left foot, right toe tucks to your right knee lifts, step back, little core here, lower down chaturanga. Inhale, find up dog or cobra. Exhale, downward facing dog. Deep breath in, open mouth sigh. Bring your big toes together to touch, soften your knees, you can jump, step, or walk your feet to your hands nice and light. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, fold in, reverse swan. Arms reach out and up, come to stand. Exhale, arms by your side. Good, chair pose, ukatasana, hips sink nice and low. Fingertips brush the earth so you can really get deep into your squat. And then when you're ready, arms reach up. Always take a peek, make sure you see all 10 toes. You can lift them up, you could reroute. And then pull that belly up and in so you engage your mula bandha. One more breath. Exhale, forward fold, let that go. Inhale, flat back. Exhale, plank, your way to get there. Jump, step, lower. Inhale, up dog or cobra. Exhale, down dog. Right foot steps forward, left foot pivots flat, warrior one. Arms reach up, five breaths, first one. So here we can focus a bit on alignment, creating some muscle memory in the body. Right knee tracks forward, left hip pulls forward as well. And then we wanna lengthen through the side body. Take one more breath, look up. And then exhale, hands frame right foot, step back. Same exhale as you low. Inhale up, exhale back. Left foot steps forward, right foot pivots flat. Inhale, arms reach. So we wanna bring the right hip forward. We wanna keep bending into that left knee so the thighs parallel to the earth. Open your hands, drift is up if you can. And that doesn't mean jerk your neck. You can look up with your eyeballs or a muscle too. Two more breaths, feeling the opening. Last one. When you're ready to exhale, hands frame left foot, same one, lower. Inhale, up dog. Exhale, down dog. We're gonna take a walk to the back of the mat. So hands to your feet. Peace sign fingers are gonna hook the big toe. Inhale, lengthen. Exhale, fold in. So same thing here. If you're feeling a little bit tight, keep your knees soft. You can work on straightening one leg or the other. Eventually both legs straighten. You can bend your elbows. Crown of the head lowers down. And you think about your sits bones reaching up. More hamstring here. Hug the quadricep onto the bone. When we engage the front of the leg, the back of the leg can open. Good, and then bring your hands onto your hips and with a flat back, let's come up to stand. Okay, a little shoulder love is next. We're gonna interlace our fingers behind the back. Some of you can get the palms to touch. Inhale, lift your heart. Exhale, come in again. Crown of the head's going to lower down. Now, arms reach up and overhead. Think about a quarter. Actually, think about a $100 bill. Okay, we don't want to drop that. So it's squeezing between your shoulder blades. If you're heavy in the heel, transfer some weight into all 10 toes. They've got you. Beautiful. Now, release your arms. Just dangle here. You're going to turn your toes out. Keep your heels in. Finding a garland squat at the back of the mat. Sometimes I turn towards the camera just so we can see. Hands at heart center. We're just gonna hang out here a little bit. I like to come here before our externally rotated poses just to give the hips a little heads up, like, hey, we're coming in. We opened our hamstrings. Those that want a little more, you can release your right arm in front of your right knee. 
and then the left arm could reach up. Again, if this strains your neck, keep looking down towards your right hand. If you want more, turn your left hand away from you, external rotate, bend the elbow. And with your right arm, maybe wrap it around the shin, see if you can bind the fingers. And then you pull the left shoulder back. Coming back to center, maybe exploring side two. Right arm could reach up. Bothers your neck, look down towards left fingers. You can even come onto a spider finger. Right hand turn away from you, bend right elbow, rest on your low back. Maybe this left arm wraps behind, binding the fingers, looking up, pulling the right shoulder back. Coming out when you're ready, hands down, lift your hips, good moment. Turn your toes to face forward. Walk your hands back out, plank pose. Good, lower down halfway. Inhale, up dog. Exhale, pulls you back, down dog. Deep breath in, open mouth, exhale. Good, bring your big toes together, look forward. You can jump, step, or walk your feet to your hands. Inhale, lengthen. Exhale, full chair pose, one breath, finish strong. Come to stand. Release your arms. Good. Let's take a big step open with the right leg. So you're in a wide leg stance. Edges of the feet in line with edges of your mat. You're going to pivot your right foot forward. Start to bend into your right knee, finding warrior two legs. Once we feel the external rotation, add in your arms. Gaze is out over your right middle finger. So make sure you can see your toes. Sometimes I use the cue to reach that right knee towards the middle toe. And if you're leaning forward, let that left arm win a little bit. So your wrists line up over your ankles and the shoulders are above your hips, nice. And then reverse it, right palm up, left arm down the back leg, bicep to the ear. Half bind, left arm behind your back. You could reach for your front hip. Keep encouraging that right knee to track forward. Gaze can be up towards the right hand or down towards your back foot. From here, let's try a bound half moon. So what you do is you reach your arm forward. I'm coming so Instagram can see, right? Right hand lowers into right shoulder. Left leg reaches up, keep it parallel to the ground. Something about bound warrior maybe helps you get into the pose. Flex this left foot, and then to come out, re-bend your front knee, let your left foot find the ground. Come back to warrior two, good. Straighten your front leg, hands on your hips, Pivot your right foot in. Let's take a break. Inhale, lengthen. Exhale, hinge forward. Releasing the hands under the shoulders. Walking them in line with your feet or for additional stretch. Turn your fingers away from you and start to walk yourself through the crown of the head, lowers closer to the earth. If it does touch down, you could try to shorten your stance. Transfer all the weight into the balls of your feet the heels of your feet, and the knife edge, so that inner arch can lift on each foot. And then walk your hands back forward. Bring your hands onto your hips, and with a flat back, we rise. Pivoting your left foot now forward, warrior two, heel to arch alignment. So you track deep into that left knee, find that external rotation with the legs. Open your arms, look over your left middle finger. So again, you could bend deeper into that front knee, try to get the thigh parallel to the ground. And then if the ankles feel that they're a little like off, right, pull this wrist back. Yeah. And then reverse, left palm up, right arm down the back leg, bicep over the ear. Gaze can be up or down. You could take half bind, wrap right arm behind your back. So you try to reach for this left hip, you'll encourage the knee to keep tracking forward. And then into half moon. So legs stay the same. We lower left hand to the outside of the foot. It could be a block. You could lower it maybe eight inches in front of the foot. Uh-huh. And then transfer the weight into the standing leg. Right leg lifts. Flex this right foot. Turn the chest open. Yeah, some of you will have success in the bind. Others are like, eh, I like to be able to catch my fall. Bending the left knee, finding warrior two again. Straighten your front leg, pivot the left foot in now. One more time in the shoulders, interlace the hands behind your back. 
Nice wide leg stands, lift the chest, and then again, hinge forward, crown down, arms up. So this is an inversion. If you have a different expression, I'm gonna give you about three to five breaths here, depending on how fast or slow you breathe. You could do your tripod headstand. You could work on your forearms coming down. If it's feeling nice in the shoulders, crown down, keep reaching here. You could even add in a twist, left hand down, right arm up. So as you get to know yourself, your practice, you get to use the variations that feel right today. Because today's practice is not like yesterday's and it won't be like the future's. Eventually, we all bring the hands back to the hips and with a flat back, find your way to stand. You're gonna pivot your front foot towards the front of the mat, soften that knee so you can step your back foot up to meet it. Tadasana Mountain Pose. One chair pose, neutralize everything, hips sink back, arms reach up. Option for crow, hands can come down, keep your toes together. Put weight into your hands. I know some of you have success coming in this way. Transfer the weight into your hands. Maybe today lift one foot, maybe the other. Your knees are around your triceps, gaze is forward, and then you could shoot it back, chaturanga. Inhale up, exhale back. Deep breath in, deep breath out. Letting go of expectations for yourself and for others. That way you're not disappointed, right? Soft smile on the lips, remember why you're here. Right leg reaches back, step it through, warrior one. Left foot pivots flat, arms reach up. Interlace your hands behind your back. Knuckles run down that back thigh. We're gonna come to humble warrior. Lift your chest, find the length. And then slowly, right shoulder, right knee, crown down, arms up. So tendency is to be heavy in the front leg. Let your back leg take 50% of the weight. Engage your muscles. You are stronger than you know. Coming back up, push into your feet, inhale. We're gonna find an eagle wrap. So your arms can come to the sides. Right arm is gonna come under the left. See if you can line up your hands, if not your thumbs. And then we're gonna put weight into the front leg. See if you could step your back leg up, cross over and find eagle. So you have to sink the hips. Your left toes can rest like a kickstand. You can come into a deeper squat, maybe tucking the left toes behind your calf. Maybe lowering your elbows in front of the knees, opening the entire back body. Now from here, we're gonna try to unravel it and come to warrior three. So unravel your left leg, but keep your arms bound and then send the left leg back. Flex your foot, release the arms, frame your right foot, standing split. Don't worry, I'm giving you a break. You can take your right hand behind the calf, pull in. You can try balance both hands around the standing ankle. If you have your handstand, you could play. And then we're gonna soften. So bend both knees, let your left knee come behind your right ankle, lower your shin. Oh, you're welcome, right? Don't get mad at the teacher, I'm just challenging you, it's yoga. Right arm reaches up, take it behind your back. If you want more of a stretch, bring your left elbow to the outside of your thigh, and then give me a deeper twist, look over your right shoulder. Practice and all is coming. One more breath. Double helix, chin looks over the left shoulder. Bring both hands to the left. Push into the ground, get that beautiful counter stretch. From here, pigeon pose. Unravel the right leg back. So your left shin can be parallel to the top of the mat. You can use your prop. You can also lie on your back, taking figure four. When you're ready, melt belly chest and forehead. A full minute here to decompress. Letting go of a lot of effort and rather being more passive here. Surrender. Maybe the palms face up, like universe, what you got? 
show me the good. Finish your last two cycles. Long, slow, deep in. Long, slow, deep out. And then slowly walk your hands in. Tuck your right toes, lift your right knee. Take it into a three-leg dog. Left leg up and back. Stretch it out. For those that like to flip your dog, you can lower your left foot behind you, left arm up. Maybe lift your heel, open the heart. And then three or four legged vinyasa. Shift forward, clean the slate, lower. Inhale up, exhale back. Release the left foot, bend your right knee, give some traction to the left leg. And then switch, bend the left knee, give some traction to the right. Left leg reaches open. Step it through, warrior one. Last side, we're coming down to the earth. Inhale, arms reach. Release the hands, interlace them behind your back. Let the knuckles run down that right leg so you really get that heart opener. And then exhale, left shoulder to the left knee, crown down, arms up. So remember to let the right leg bear some weight. Keep bending into that front knee, arms reach up. Maybe lift the back arch of your foot, can look even back towards the foot or the front, whatever feels better for the neck. And then push into the feet, come back up, warrior one. Arms out like wings, this time left under right, create eagle arm. Bend at the elbow, maybe line up your hands, your thumbs. And then we're gonna try to step the back foot up to the front. Cross the knees over, sink into your squat. Right toes can come down like a kickstand. You could tuck the right toes behind your calf. Maybe keep lifting the elbows, pulling the forearms forward. Maybe compress elbows towards knees. And then keep your arms bound, just unravel the legs, warrior three. So right leg back, left, right arm forward. And then release the arms, frame the left foot. Good job, guys. Right leg reaches up, standing split. So whatever you're working on, maybe it's an internal rotation, maybe left arm behind the calf melting down. Maybe it's balance, both hands towards the ankle. Maybe handstand kick up. We're all gonna release, soften both knees. Lower your right shin bone all the way down to the ground. Left arm behind you, right elbow to the outside of the thigh, spinal twist, look over left shoulder. Deep breath in, exhale, empty. Double helix, chin looks over the right shoulder. Both hands over to the right, counter it out. Push into the ground, pull the left sitting bone back. Such a beautiful release. And then pigeon pose. Left leg extends back, right shin parallel to the top of your mat for a deeper stretch. You can draw the heel in, you could sit on your block underneath that right sits bone. This can also be done on your back, figure four. Create the length in the torso, and then exhale, belly, chest, and forehead. One full minute where you could just be.
take your last two cycles. Really fill up the lungs. Let it touch every cell of your body with this beautiful oxygen. And when you exhale, letting go of fear, of doubts, toxins. And breathing in, trust the goodness. And exhaling out evil. Let karma handle what it's supposed to. Slower than you want to, walk your hands in, torso upright. Tuck your left toes, lift that left knee, three-leg dog. Do whatever organic movements in the body requested. Circles, you could flip the dog, lower right foot, stay on the ball of the foot, right arm up. Wild thing. Final option for vinyasa, it could be three or four legged. Shift forward, lower, inhale, exhale. Last down dog of the practice. Notice how it compares to the first one. Maybe the heels are a little closer to the earth. You found room in the shoulders, the spine, the hips. And then look forward, soften your knees. You can jump, step, or walk your feet through. Soles the feet together. Baddha Konasana, heels in nice and close. Hands could reach for the ankles, maybe a peace sign, finger binds in the big toes. Inhale, long spines. Exhale, hinge forward, use the elbows against your knees. Eventually, after the extension is found, totally cool to drop that chin, let the weight of your head go. Slowly peel the torso upright. Go ahead, close the knees in. We'll do one round of Navasana boat pose. So your hands can come behind your knees. You lean back just a little bit. Not on the tailbone, not on the sits bone. Shins can lower or actually elevate parallel to the ground. You can extend the legs. You can extend the arms. You can reach your arms. Keep shining your heart. Lift your chest for three. Last two. And one, cross your ankles, root your hands. See if you can lift your bottom up, maybe your feet. Good, and then let's find our way onto our backs. Arms can reach forward as you recline all the way back. Legs can be bent or straight. Allow lower back to come down, then mid back, and then upper. Oh. Draw the knees in, little side to side rock knowing that the universe has your back. You could feel it here. Feet root, back bend of choice. You could do a supported bridge with your prop under the low back. You could interlace your fingers since our shoulders are pretty open here. Push into the blades of your hands, lift the hips higher. If you want full wheel, arms reach behind you, bend your elbows, hands in line with the ears. Come to the crown of the head, and then push into your hands, shine your heart. Keep drawing the knees towards each other, almost like a block was in between them. When you're ready to come out, always tuck that chin in to keep everything safe. Happy baby pose, soles of the feet up to the sky. You can reach for your heels. If not, maybe the shins or the outside of your feet. Nice long spine here. Maybe give your baby a rock. And then closing the legs, extend to straight legs up the wall pose. So we did do two inversions in our folds today, but if you want a little more, you can lift up to shoulder stand, supporting your low back. Maybe try your eagle wrap because once you find the alignment, you might not have to worry about the balance here. Then try the other leg, just playful. You could do soles of the feet together as well. Maybe plow pose, keep the neck neutral here. So if your camera is not forward as you're watching this, don't turn your head to the side just to see. You can use the cues. Ear pressure pose, bending the knees. Arms could reach back for the ankles. Super good for the thyroid and your spine. 
an anti-age keeping our spine like a slinky. Eventually you'll meet back, lower your feet, lower your spine, and then give yourself another squeeze. So we'll open our arms out like a T. Let's cross left knee over right, either one time or again, you could do your eagle wrap here. We're gonna soar and fly. If you want a little more, bring your right foot down to scoot your hips to the left and then let the knees fall to the right. Let the left shoulder melt down, turn your head to the left, spinal twist. So you really don't need to use this right hand because you have the traction from your leg pulling the knees closer to the earth. A little bit deeper than we typically go in this particular variation. So if it's too much, you can always back off as long as your hips and your shoulders are perpendicular from each other, you're getting a spinal twist. It's almost like a sponge wringing out the old dirty water. So you can have this fresh start. Head will come back to center and then the knees. Unravel them, plant your feet for a moment onto the earth, let your knees come in towards each other. Bring your left hand on your heart and the right hand on your belly. Just take a gratitude moment for showing up. I think sometimes the hardest part is just hitting the play button or carving out the time in your day to watch this. And once you're here, you never regret it. Am I right? Take the knees in. So this time we'll cross right knee over left knee. You could do it twice for the eagle and then maybe put your left foot down so you can scoot your hips to the right. That way the knees fall to the left and then your right shoulder melts down, turning the gaze towards the right hand. Eyes can be soft here, perhaps even closed. Getting this beautiful stretch in the spine and the obliques. Allowing the breath to now come to more of a resting breath. Not as much control required. Your body has worked really hard and we're just preparing for final relaxation. Starting to soften the face and the jaw. Opening the mouth. And then the head to center, knees to center. This time as you unravel them, bring the soles of the feet together, lower the heels down, knees apart. You could do your cactus or goalpost. You could gently let the fingers touch over ahead. Spending as much time in this position before entering final Shavasana. Some days I want to stay here for my entire relaxation. And others, maybe I pushed it a little too much and I want to enter Shavasana the moment I come in. So just honoring where you are and knowing that whatever choice you decide is good. Don't second guess it. Eventually letting go of all mantra work, of all breath control. In a full minute to soak in the benefits.
When you're ready, gently begin to deepen the breath. A little bit of movement to the body, fingers, toes, head side to side. Taking the knees into the belly. And then coming up to seated your own way. It could be a rock and roll. It could be fetal. Coming full circle. Hands at heart center. Bow your chin to your fingertips. This is your reminder to focus on the gifts from others and help them get back to being themselves. Thank you so much for showing up, for doing the work and allowing me to guide you. I wish you a beautiful rest of your day. Namaste.